What happens when King Charles dies? On the 8th of September 2022, Queen Elizabeth II's 70 year reign came to an unexpected end. Although many knew that she had long been suffering from a disease, most in the United Kingdom were astonished to hear the news that she was about to die. Her successor, the now King Charles, is one of Britain's most controversial kings. Yet, as he was in training for 70 years as heir presumptive and later apparent, he is perhaps the most equipped to succeed her. Still, King Charles is not a young man. As of November 2023, King Charles will be 75, meaning he is not only an old king, but he will be one of the oldest British monarchs in history, falling only behind Queen Victoria and his mother, Queen Elizabeth II. Charles's advanced age and pressures of his job have left many wondering what will happen when King Charles dies. When it comes to royal deaths, King Charles's own death will follow the history of what happened to his deceased family members. As remarked in Netflix's The Crown, all immediate relations to the monarch and the monarch included have prepared funeral arrangements in the event of their passing. When King Charles's grandfather, King George VI, died, Operation Hyde Park Corner was put into practice, named after the tube station closest to Buckingham Palace. Because there had been sufficient planning for almost 16 years of his death, the palace were able to quickly organise a funeral and the removal of his body from Sandringham Castle, where he died. However, since the death of the Queen's father in 1952, the operations, as they are known as, have slightly changed in name. Instead of being named as simple landmarks in London, they had now been adapted to suit bridges, a nod to the entrance to the next life after death. Remember, the British royal family are Anglican Christians, meaning they believe in the afterlife. And the death plans of King Charles follows this belief in name. The next royal death occurred 50 years later, in 2002, upon the death of Princess Margaret, which did not have an official death name, likely because the public were not expecting a death at the time, although the royal guards had certainly rehearsed this previously. The next death of the Queen Mother in 2002 was named Operation Tay Bridge, named after a bridge in London. In fact, all subsequent royal deaths were named after bridges in London. Prince Philip's death was known as Operation Fourth Bridge, while the late Queen's death, despite happening in Balmoral Castle in Scotland, was known as Operation London Bridge. All of the aforementioned figures' deaths sparked a public period of state mourning in which entertainment outlets are expected to close down and a public holiday granted on the day of the funeral. King Charles's death name has been planned since he was invested as Prince of Wales all the way back in July 1969. This means that his death plan has been rehearsed for over 50 years and stands as one of the longest prepared funeral arrangements in the history of the world. Despite the long-term planning, his death plan still remains a secret, although it's highly likely to follow exactly what happened in the event of his late mother's passing. Because I want to avoid accusations of high treason, as I break down what will happen when King Charles dies, all of these preparations are hypothetical and not derivative despite these being highly probable outcomes once King Charles eventually passes away. After all, this has been rehearsed and it is very unlikely that anything will change. When King Charles dies, regardless of where he dies, his death plan will be known as Operation Menai Bridge, named after a bridge in Wales and suited to his status as the then Prince of Wales. When King Charles passes away, the public will not be informed immediately. As what happened with the death of Queen Elizabeth II, she passed away almost four hours before the news were made aware. The first to know about the death of the monarch are those in the British government, notably the Prime Minister and Cabinet, and shortly thereafter, the Shadow Government and Parliament. Now, different plans are dependent on where King Charles will be at the time of his death, but it's very straightforward. If King Charles dies like his mother did at Balmoral Castle, his body will be flown in a private jet back to London. This also applies if Charles is in Northern Ireland, Sandringham Palace or Wales when he passes away. If King Charles is at Windsor Castle or Buckingham Palace, there will be no need for a private jet. Because Charles would be the monarch, a period of state mourning lasting at least 10 days will be highly likely, 
with a bank holiday granted on the day of his funeral. His body will lie in state in London for the days following his death and until his funeral, where members of the public are permitted to mourn in front of the coffin. As we saw with Queen Elizabeth II's lying in state, her eight grandchildren were allowed to mourn for 10 minutes publicly, standing vigil by her coffin. King Charles has, at present, five grandchildren who were all very young, his eldest being only 10, Prince George. It would be highly unlikely for this to happen if King Charles passed away in the next few years, given the young ages of his grandchildren. After the 10 days of state mourning, King Charles's coffin will be driven from central London to Windsor Chapel, a journey which takes about an hour, during which the road between the two places will be closed, allowing only the hearse and a mass of security, allowing spectators to witness the coffin for the last time before it is sealed in Windsor Chapel, where the rest of primary royal family members are buried. Now, the story doesn't end there, as there are other considerations for us. Firstly, will Camilla still be queen after King Charles' death? In the event that Queen Camilla outlives her husband, her title will change as she is no longer to be the Queen Consort. However, she cannot be recognised as Queen Mother since she is not the mother to the next King, Prince William. Instead, she will likely be recognised as the Dowager Queen of England, meaning former Queen, a title which has not been used for almost 400 years since the death of Charles II of England. His wife, Catherine of Braganza, was known as the Dowager Queen upon the death of her husband. As is expected, because there is primogeniture succession, meaning that the succession goes straight down rather than across, the next monarch will be King Charles's eldest son, William, who will become king after his father's death, with his wife, Catherine, Princess of Wales, becoming Queen Consort. If, in the unlikely event that William dies before his father, George will inherit the throne, bypassing Prince Harry, who would be old enough to take the reins of power. This is because primogeniture goes straight downward in the family tree, meaning all children would need to inherit before the sibling of the original person could do so. This would be problematic for Britain, however, because Prince George would require a regent until he reaches the age of 18 years old. Nonetheless, the regent would likely be Catherine, Princess of Wales, due to her proximity to the throne and years of royal service. Again, what I have just broken down is entirely hypothetical, yet probable, in the event of the passing of King Charles III. Thank you guys so very much for watching today's video. As always, I am the Shy Historian, and stay tuned for many more.